edition of Every Man is a Millionaire with your hustling godfather. Today, we're going to talk about getting those assets, a wealth mindset, what it is, how to get one, and some things you need to do. Now, first of all, to have a wealth mindset, you don't have to be a millionaire. Let me say that again. I'm going to give you an example of that, too. To have a wealth mindset, you don't have to be a millionaire. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions. You have a lot of people who are seeking millionaire status. Let me give you an example real quick. Let's say you owned not one, not two, not three, but four. No, let's say five, five houses that were worth $50,000. Owned them completely outright. So net worth of 250K and each one of those houses was generating, let's say $800 a month rent. That's reasonable. So five times eight is $3,200 3, per month. Let's say you manage these properties yourself and you have a job. You are wealthier than the average American and you're not a millionaire. Let's go ahead and crank it up. You own 10 houses net worth $500,000 and you make 6,400 bucks per month. Passive income, take up, take 10% off. You're still bringing home 60, almost 70 grand. You're wealthier than most people. The wealth mindset is to have the ability to generate money. That's the wealth mindset. As easy as possible, but in the beginning, it's gonna be hard because you're gonna have to have active income to go ahead and get that going. Oh, announcement. Today is the last day for you to get Hustler Undergrad for $199 times 25 months because the price is going to go up to $300, bucks, 299 just letting you know. So today is the last day to get it. If you want more information, just go back, go to my front of my channel and watch the last 10 videos. They give you plenty of information because I have a lot of folks who are emailing me and they want to... Um, have a conversation. They want to chit chat. Honestly, I would love to talk to everybody, but it, there ain't enough time in the day for all that. So that's why I try. And I'll even get into this. And this is a wealth mindset move. Once again, the links below for anyone who wants to not get rich quick. You're looking at one to five years, depending on where you're already positioned for you to make that kind of money you want to make. So I'm just saying that. I'm just putting that out there because some people are looking for, to come up in six weeks. But if you want your life to be different this time next year, sign up. If you're looking for some hustle porn, if you're looking for some scam stuff, if you're looking for something that does not require hard work, um, I don't have anything for you. All right, so getting into the wealth mindset. I'll go back to how I got started in business. I used to sell office furniture, did that for about two and a half years. Then I got into the storage auction business. It was kind of some overlap with that. What I didn't like about the, uh, new, the commercial furniture business was it was a lot of one offs. You can never continue to make money. You know, once you do a deal, it's a nice deal. You get paid very well, but that was it. Then I got to use furniture. Well, I got into used furniture first. I got into new furniture. And then I got into storage auction business, which was still active income, but I was able to get the cost of goods so cheap. It was like so easy to make money. But I didn't really get into a wealth building situation until YouTube when I wrote my first book. I wrote the book. It took me three, four months. I put it out. I sold that book for three years. I worked for, let's say, five months. Just go ahead and say five months. And I had 31 months 
of income coming in from my five months of work. To be honest, I still have money coming in from that book. And we're going on eight years, nine years. Yeah, nine years. And I still have money coming in from that book. A big part of, and the thing that really got me was I didn't have to do anything after I put in this incredible amount of work up front. That was the thing. I put up a lot of work up front, but once that work was done, I was able to generate reoccurring revenue. I'm not going to call it passive income because passive income, I think, is only going to come from you know, long, big assets such as maybe stocks, bonds, some that pays dividends for years and years and years. Um, so I would consider my book kind of passive income, but it will it had a timetable on it. It had a timeline on it. Now, that really took me to a different place in generating wealth because you don't have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. Let me be really, really clear about that. You don't have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. And this is one of the biggest problems we have because everybody's like trying to be a millionaire, trying to be get that CEO mindset. When if you can follow simple instructions and you can consistently execute for a period of time that you will not be paid for. When I was writing that book for five months, I was not paid. There was no money coming in from that. It was a purely speculative type deal. I didn't know how much money I was going to make. But to start testing, I had to write the book and I had to put the book out. And I ended up putting that book out not once, not twice, but three times because I've had all kinds of issues. But each time I put the book out, I made more and more and more money. So the wealth mindset is not looking at big chunks of cash. It's looking at something that can create you passive income or reoccurring revenue for a few years which gives you the ability to have income coming in to do better by the business, to invest in the business, to live, so on and so forth. But how many of you have passive income, long-term passive income? You know, if you have a rental house that's paid off, that's passive income. If you have a rental house you bought a long time ago, and let's say your mortgage is 900, but you can now get 800 in rent, and you've got passive income. Uh, if you've had stocks forever that pay dividends, you've got passive income. Passive income, and I think this is a misnomer because you have a lot of people who have short-term reoccurring revenue, which could be a year or two or three, and they confuse that with passive income, which can come in for decades. Um, that's one of the situations because people who own Coca-Cola stock, and I mean, because I think Coca-Cola paid a dividend I remember this one lady who used to live in my neighborhood. She had some, she had a bunch of Coca-Cola stock. That's what she lived off of, the dividends for decades. That's passive income. So how does having short-term reoccurring revenue help you? If you can build it big enough, that can create a situation that can free you to build a bigger business. Because when you're building a business, the money that you need to live on should not be taken into consideration. All of the money that that business generates should go back into the business until the business is big enough for you to take money out the business. And that's one of the hardest things to do. This is why if you become a, a student of Hustle Undergrad, we're going to get you what's called uh, number one of the four mandates, a side hustle. Our goal is to get you something that generates a GM excuse me, a G a month. That's the first step. Because if you can't make your first hundred bucks on the side, you surely can't make your first hundred, you know, thousand or hundred thousand. So you got to make those first dollars to one, convince yourself that it's possible. That's really, really key. And to set the money train and the wealth in the wealth building, the wealth mindset in motion. Because I had a money mindset when I was in the storage auction business, but I didn't have a wealth mindset. 
I really didn't. I had, I was about that money. I was about, but I did save money. I saved, at one point I was living off 50% uh, of my income. Currently, I live on five or 7% of my income. And that's a very big part of wealth development. Not saving just to save, but saving to invest is really, really key. Now, let's talk about assets. Now, I was going to talk some stuff about some millennials, but there's two groups of millennials. The kind that's here online trying to make as much money as possible without doing anything, without owning the house. And we're going to talk about uh, how millennials are changing the housing market. Um, they're really trying to get the most for the least. That's, a, that's some millennials. There's another group of millennials who are buying property, who are building businesses, who understand it takes time to build something. So I can't really talk about millennials in one singular term without segmenting the millennials. Right now, due to millennials, people are building brand new subdivisions that will be 100% rentals. I was watching a stream on that this morning. 100% rentals because the millennials who are not trying to build anything, who are not trying to own property, who are not trying to have assets, they're literally shaping the real estate market. And for those uh, millennials who are not getting assets, it's going to catch up with them. It's going to catch up with them because what we're developing is a permanent underclass. You've got some windows that if you can jump through it and build some wealth, get yourself some assets, you'll be fine in old age. We got a lot of people who are not even thinking like that, nor even trying to do that, which is crazy. All right. So let me see how long have we gone before I get into the chat room. OK, cool. So people don't like it when they get in the chat room, but I got love for the chat room. And to the person, Ken, K-E-N-G Tang. I don't know if that's your real name. Uh, if you're watching and you need some testimonials, check out the chat room because uh, I have students of Hustler undergrad, people who bought courses. I have people who bought every course that I put out, every book that I put out for the last nine years. You want some pretty testimonial because you're lazy, but don't want to watch and see this is this is something else too and for you guys who show up for these live streams and watch them and, and I, I see you i see the comments i see you going back checking out the archives you guys are positioning yourself to be successful and it's not because you're watching my stuff it's because you're developing the habit of studying you're developing the habit of educating yourself there are many people some millennials who want it fast quick and easy without digesting the material, without looking at anything. So kudos to you guys. All right, so let's see. What's up, AKW Beats, Jerry Brown, Dunny Breeze, Charlatan, Charlatan with the Sniper Riper. What's up, Daryl, Michael Dennis, Latasha. Okay, it's fun. <laughs> hey, I was just doing math off my head, but that's even better than 3,200. What's up, Chris? Because once again, you don't have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. And I'm going to break that down in a minute after the chat. What's up, uh, Theodore? I think I got Chris, Latasha. I don't chase money. I chase future me. That's a good thing to do. What's up, JC Sanchez? Special Ed. That was a rapper when I was a kid. All right, Burston, waking up at 4 a.m. executing. I'm going to ignore that. What's up, 285 property? Uh, Mr. Table for one, passive income is all that. Please address your debt first. Well, before you start investing, and anybody will tell you, any book will tell you about investing, you need to get rid of your personal debt. So that's a given. All right, K-Sun, you want to do that day trader thing? 
Good luck to you. I mean, seriously. What's up, Mo Grizzly? Uh, you've got that long-term passive income, but I haven't gotten it to my ideal monthly income. But see, before you get to that ideal income, you must have some because like seriously, you know, 300 bucks a month passive income or recurring revenue will help out so many people. So it doesn't have to be large in the beginning because you got to develop some before you get more. What's up, Lamote? Lamote always promoting. Lamote's on Instagram. Lamote's on Facebook. He's always promoting. What's up, Yolanda? Special. Uh, you need to go to Google and start experimenting, Special Ed. What's up, Tyra? Cool Breeze. Appreciate the $20 Super Chat. Uh, I will recognize this. Thanks from Birmingham. Keep inspiring the aspiring roll tide. All day long. All right, all right. So we got this. Uh, cool breeze. I think you're on the edge of millennials. I think 35 is the tipping point. <laughs> you're riding on 75 for the south for this live stream. That's cool. I got it made. That's right. Uh, JC Sanchez, if you make, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. If you make 500 a year after expenses, would that make you wealthy? We're going to talk about that. Tim A, I woke up Glendon Live at 500 in my PayPal account. Life is good. All right, Ice Cube, I know where you're going with that. Congratulations. Uh, Jamar Thrasher, what should black people do to move up the corporate ladder? I honestly don't know. Um, I, I'm not really good with employee in the employment thing on the side of getting jobs. I'm not really a good. So I, I really don't have any information. All right. So let's talk about. Go back to. Um, J.C. Sanchez, if you make 500 a year after expenses, would that make you wealthy? OK, let's say you had a job. And the job paid you a million bucks a year. Right. And you say maybe 10 percent, maybe 100 K in your 401k and whatever. And you just balled out and you just spent your money like it was going out of style. Now you have the income to make yourself wealthy, but you don't have the habits and the execution points to make yourself wealthy. Now, let's say you make 75 K and every year you get a new house every year you buy a rental property. So in 10 years, you've got 10 rental properties. They're worth about, let's say, five, yeah, let's say 500 K because you buy them in low income areas. That, so they're easy to rent. You offer below market rate rent to get yourself some good renters. You at your 75K with your rental properties are wealthier than the person who makes a million dollars a year who does nothing to leverage that income into wealth. You're wealthier. So it isn't how much you make, it's what you do with it. Because look at the rappers, the ball players, all these people who literally were making millions of dollars per year in five, Six, 10 years out, once they're out the league, they're dead, broken and dead. No one ever sat these guys down because the thing is, I'm not going to be harsh on athletes because once again, we had this conversation. We all know how to lose weight, eat less than you need. But the execution point's hard. So you got these athletes, they got the groupies, they got everybody in the ear, they got the family and all this other stuff. So they're the golden goose that's getting plucked by everybody. And I think now people are sitting down and talking to these dudes and saying, look, you need to put away 50% of your income. I mean, you're making 20 million a year. I, I do believe you could put away 50, maybe even 80% of your after-tax income and still ball out. <laughs> so I think that these guys like Richard Sherman, uh, he's not going to be broke. Uh, the Bennett brothers, Jordan, uh, LeBron, he's not going to be broke. So a lot of these guys are getting the proper financial education that they need. But 
it isn't the amount of money. It's what you do. It's like if you good example, my favorite two people when I was uh, working at Fort McPherson, there were two investors, uh, school teachers, and they lived on one income of like 20 something, 25, 26 thousand dollars a year. And they took her income and bought a house every year. They got wealthy. And I don't think that their portfolio was at a million at the time. I don't think it was, it was probably definitely over a million now if they're still alive. But at the time, it wasn't a million. No. But the thing is, you want to have cash producing assets. You want to have things that produce cash, like creating creative tax strategies to downplay your uh, tax situation. You want to have things like my first book is an asset that still makes money to this day, but it doesn't make nowhere near the money it used to, but it still makes money nine years later. And I wish I had wrote 10 of those books, maybe 20, because once again, um, let's get with the Craigslist protocols I'll talk about on Disruptive Mail. None of that would have happened the way that it did. It would have happened because I was doing it, it while I was in the storage auction business, but I did not perfect my craft until the summer of 2011 when I had six figures per month coming in. And I didn't have to do anything except make one or two YouTube videos a week. I had a lot of time to be introspective. I had a lot of time to do research. I had a lot of time to delve into the psychology of women on Craigslist. I, I had so much time. And this is one of the things that if you will devote maybe five or 10 years of your life right now building stuff, then the next half of your life can be much easier and smoother because now you have assets that make money. And that's what happened to me. I was able to do so many things because I had an asset that was making money without me having to do something. And you have a lot of people up here talking about passive income, like with online courses. Online courses have a shelf life unless you're creating a school, because this is the thing. Everyone's creating online courses. How many people are creating schools with multiple courses? There's a few, but not that many. And that's going to be the next move. And that's what going to stem from how you made your first course. Because if your first course was for immediate trendy stuff, you're not going to be able to put that in your school. So this is why I'm really glad that I took a lot of time building 30 days to 2,500. I'm taking a lot of time to uh, put in, and oh, just for... Because I did say there was probably going to be two, webin two webinars per week for Hustler Undergrad. It's probably going to, not two a week, two a month. It's probably going to be one a week because there's so much information I have to. And from the feedback from the first three webinars, it's like, okay, well, we need to add more. We need to add more texture. We need to add more insights. So it'll be one a week now, minimum versus uh, two a month. So just to let y'all know, that's what's happening with Hustle Undergrad. And then I'm probably gonna have like a Q&A day. So there'll, there, there will be definitely a training webinar with execution points, things you should do. And then a few days later, we'll have like a Q&A and the Q&A will be predicated only on that webinar. Cause one of the things is I do a webinar and I have people asking me for stuff that maybe everyone else isn't ready for, you know, that's trying to fight above their weight class. So these Q and A's will be just predicated on the information that was given. Hopefully I explain that. All right, let me go back down here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the cars don't have a ghost of a chance in that game. What's up, Stefan? Special Ed, Roll tight. Von B, so wealth building is relative to your behavior. Exactly. I mean, going back to these two teachers, as a couple, they didn't make 50 grand a year. 
but because they exercised financial discipline and built a portfolio of money making assets, they retired in the style. And they live very well. They pay for their kids college because they had money coming in. Yep, MC Hammer is a great example. Special Ed, <laughs> life's been good. Took up MGTO last year, being single, saving plus, staying away from baby's mama. <laughs> the chosen one, but ain't the housing market overvalued now? This is the game, uh, the chosen one. Once you develop a, a wealth mindset and pair that with a hustler's mindset, because yes, the market is tanking and there's blood in the streets. This is the time you can get some deals. This house, I, I'll, I'll even get into the numbers. Uh, they tried to sell it for $8.99 last year. That didn't work. They The house, because they were going to, I think they were building the house. And I ended up getting this for like $750. And in time, you know, because I don't plan on selling it, I'm planning on keeping it forever because I have many, many purposes for it. But you can get deals right now. If you're a buyer, you can get deals. Because see, this is the thing. You can't wait until the market melts down because the best deals are going to be gone. Because the people who are looking, the people who are ready, they're out there sniffing deals right now. So and depending upon your wealth building strategy, it doesn't matter if the price of your house, let's say you go out and get you a rental property and let's say the rental property is 135 market crashes. And then this rental property now is worth 125. If you don't plan on selling it and you got a low mortgage and let's just say you get a rent in there and you break even, you're still building wealth because this is what's going to happen at some point in the future. Rents are going to rise. Rents, rents do not go down. Rents may not go up for a year, a few years, but they don't go down. My apartment, my first apartment in this neighborhood, well, my only apartment in this neighborhood is literally three and a half miles away. And the rent was a thousand fifty for a two bedroom, two bath. Same apartment. Eleven years later, the rent is not even eleven years. Two thousand eleven. Eight years, nine years. Oh, no. yeah. Eight, seven the rent is 1900 same apartment it's 1900 so you go ahead and get this house it drops to 125 then 3 years later you know let's say the rent was um you can rent a house for a thousand so now 3 years later you can rent that house for say 1250 now you got $250 a month positive cash flow then you look at like 6 years you can rent that house for fifteen hundred. Now you got five hundred dollars cash flow. Nine years, you can rent that house out for eighteen hundred bucks. You got eight hundred dollars a month positive cash flow. You got ten k a year. Now, if you bought four houses in the same year, you got forty grand a year. Then you got your expenses and property taxes. But you see what I mean? And you're not a millionaire. Remember when we talked about how most of America could not come up with $2,000 cash in 30 days? $2,000 cash in 30 days. Half of America can't do that. Probably 65% of America can't do that. You got yourself one rental property. You got a job. You'd be able to come up with the cash in, two, in 30 days. So there's a lot of ways you got to do it. Josh Ball, the first million you lose, the second million you keep. Not really. No, you because this is something else, too. When you hear about these guys who lost the first million, they were like me. Young, didn't know what they had and just doing stupid stuff. But you guys can benefit from the advice of someone who's been there. You don't have to do it like that. If you just put off getting that car for two years, then you can get it and pay cash. Cool breeze, and that's why I set up a savings account, operating account, expense account, investment account. Yeah, because at this point, 
just the simple act of setting up those accounts and starting to manage your money differently is going to put you on the path to wealth. Once again, you don't have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. I want you to think, let's say you're 35. You have student loan debt of 30K and you got maybe 25K in your 401k. So you have a negative net worth of $10,000. If you create just a side hustle, and the side hustle makes 15K a year, which is very doable. You just changed your life. Just those two, you know, setting up the uh, uh, checking accounts and getting a side hustle. Now, let's say you sub the checking accounts, get a side hustle, uh, start a, a serious online business or get into real estate. Five years, you could be a millionaire on paper. With cash coming in, because this is why I keep talking it ain't going to happen this year. It ain't going to happen probably next year. Year three, year four, you're going to start seeing some positive things, but you got to get started now. And this is the big problem with many people. They don't want to get started now. They don't want to, they don't want to go through the rough patches. They don't want to go through the sacrifice. They don't want to go through delayed gratification. And Jamar, while your viewers are keeping their jobs and building this business, shouldn't they try to move up in their jobs? Moving up will give them more money, skills, credibility, and expand their networks. No, you should not try to move up in your job. Good question. And this is why. What is our focus here? If you get caught up in, I'm going to tell you, the perfect jobs or security jobs, jobs that don't require a lot of you because your ultimate goal is to separate yourself from your job. So you should not be investing a lot of times in get, quote, getting more skills or whatever, unless you're going to keep your job forever and you, you're really happy with that. But you should be focusing on your side hustle and other things because this has happened several times. We'll go to Morris. And this was uh, just from store shocks and stuff. Morris was making about 45 K a year. He bought my first book and I think he got Craigslist. That's it. Within two and a half years, Morris was making like 65K on the side. Morris got laid off and he's like, I ain't even worried. This is great. I get my I get a severance package and I get unemployment for like, I think it was 18 months or something like that. So he was going to have money coming in for two and a half years while he worked on his business. So, no, we would not be doing that, James. But a good question. That's right. You see, Cool Breeze is on to some here because let's just say you set up your holding company, right? And you're out here. You really don't know what you want to do, but you're setting up your holding company. You're putting money in these accounts. When you do figure out what you want to do when you grow up, you actually have money to throw at this thing now without bringing money from your current job income. How about that? So congratulations, Cool Breeze. <laughs> Mo Chrisley. <laughs> Latasha, the only thing that's available is Hustler Undergrad. Because this is one of the things that I, because there's a lot of courses and people got confused. And I was like, you know what? Let me just bundle all this stuff up together and create a school. And it's one of the best things I ever did. So you got to get Hustler Undergrad to get access to everything else. Because that's going to be the ticket. Uh, let's see. We just jumped. Good Lord. <laughs> With no real sales experience, where should I start looking to sell to millennials in person? Or would you suggest focus on the online sales only? I would say do both. Depending, you know, your product, well, your audience depends on how you will sell. If you're selling T-shirts, Believe it or not, you can sell those offline as well as online. It really depends on what you're selling and who you're selling to. Uh, Von B, all of their webinars are recorded. And we're going to play around with the schedule for a few months because what I may do is do the first webinar live, then have a replay in the webinar and I'll be there to ask questions and then we'll have another because I know I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try and find a sweet spot. So it's going to take a few months to figure it out. 
where the most people can attend. I have a feeling it's going to be after seven. I have a feeling that's where it's going to be. Uh, Eric and Nicole agreed. Been out of the rat race three years now. The money's everywhere outside of being employed. <laughs> JP, I had a I have a hard time accessing the rewatch webinar. Um, I sent out an email with all that information. So what you guys got to do is start using the, the tools. Lyndon at hustler under h undergrad dot com. Because I guarantee you, you got the information in your email box and it's probably in your spam folder. So go to your spam folder and open that up and then make Glendon at H undergrad a save contact and you should be getting all the information. Uh, NC Administrative Consulting. I'm trying to get out of the workplace where I live. Life is so much better than this. I'm tired. Well, you're looking at like a three year journey. And you're going to have to get a little tired because you're going to have to execute and execute in the dark. And what I mean by that is you're working very, very hard with no tangible benefits at the moment. And that is such a hard thing for people to do, but it's required for ultimate success. Von B, my family's example, of those two teachers, father, a garbage man, my mom, a CNA and a gang of property. It's real out here, man. It's real. Cool breeze. The real problem for me is I need a side hustle, but I really don't know what I'm good at besides working my ass off. And I'm not that much of a people person. Well, we're going to start addressing that because one of the issues is many people don't know what they want to be when they grow up. They just don't. So I'm going to once I get the holding company stuff done, because this is something that anyone can do, get it set up. And, and then the YouTube tax strategy, you can do that. And then we're going to delve into what you can do. So I'm going to put together a list of stuff that people can do. And it's going to be different than the one I did here on YouTube. So once again, you know, we must do this in a certain sequence. We must do the holding companies the five checking accounts, then we'll get into sales and marketing. And I'm probably somewhere along that spot. I'm going to get into, you can do this. You can do this. I do a lot of research. So we'll be talking about that, but it's uh, kudos to cool breeze. You'll see what you're doing is you're prepping yourself for a future. You don't know what the future is going to be, but, but you're saving up, you're putting money aside. So when you find this thing, you don't have to scramble to find money to get it launched. So, you know, once again, kudos. Uh, Londo High King and any other examples of quality assets from real, real estate? There, all right, th th it gets tricky. Like take my book. My book is an asset because it still sells and produces money. It does not produce as much money as it used to. My online courses are an asset, but they're an active asset because I have to do, do stuff to make money. Um, real estate, bonds that pay dividends, stocks that pay dividend, businesses like say you can invest in the business and let's say you invest in 100K and for the life of the business, you get 3K a month back. That, you know, something like that. Because the thing is, and this is a good question, there's really not a lot of passive income models. There are many people that can confuse like my online courses. Some people will have online courses and they would consider this passive income, but you got to market, you got to do YouTube videos, you got to run ads. Uh, they ain't passive income. <laughs> you got to do a lot to make that money. So this is why I don't consider my online courses passive, but at some point they can become passive. They really could because I got to build them a certain way and I'm looking at like maybe two years. So, you know, it, it's just you got to and also do this. Don't focus on what makes money. Focus on what you like, because there's a one to three year journey and then there's more time after that. So why leave a job 
to do something that you hate or could end up hating because you really had no interest in it other than just the money. Like this is going to be crazy. You know how many girls, you know how long girls typically last in the porn industry? Six months. They used up burnout about six months because they've done all this stuff, quote, for the money. But then you have someone like Nina Hartley, who's been doing it for three decades. She loves it. Find some that you love. Thank you, Sir Nicholas. Kang Tang, whatever your name is. That's a testimonial. Just saying. Mo Grizzly, 40K is salary. Pretty much. Mentor Shelly, what's up? Um, be benefiting from the advice you don't have to burn to learn. Yeah, because the, the thing is, hustle should be part of your vocabulary, but when you're building a business, sometimes they're just going to be built. It's like a kid growing up. You may want your kid to be five when the kid's two, but the kid's not going to be five until the kid is five. This is a lot like businesses. It's a level of maturity. It's a level of seasoning. It's a level of putting stuff together that will make your business get to that point. And if you're doing something you hate, that's going to be very, very hard to stick with. Um, just Google creative jobs, Kubris. Gee, if you had to write a book today, what would you write? <laughs> well, I'm actually working on the book, so it kind of took a back seat to this project. Probably going to write a book, how to go from uh, from poor to wealthy, because that's a journey that I made. That will probably be the next main book. It'll probably be a giveaway or something for a hustler undergrad, but that'll probably be the book. Because the thing is, I do a lot of research on social classes. I do a lot of research on the economy because how the behavior of people influences their purchases. The behaviors of people influences their job choices. It's really, really pernicious how all this stuff comes together. Because remember, I was talking about this recession stuff long before anyone else, because a recession just doesn't happen. It's not like you know, you, you pour a glass of water and the, and the glass is full. It, you know, it takes months and it, sometimes it takes years for the all the, the things to to happen where we have a recession. And I want you, you know, just the thing. Now, many people, even on Fox News, are saying that these tariffs are not a good idea. I don't know why he did it, but we'll, we'll we won't get political. Yes, it is. Josh Barr, delay gratification is huge for long term service success. Warren Buff is a great example. Um, it <laughs> just jump. I mean, miss some people. Hold on. All right. Michael Dennis, delayed gratification is a strong cash phrase for black countrymen. Yeah, it's like cuss words, man. It is I, I I had someone on here who was saying it's not going to take that long. You know, me and my friends, we scaled up in a few weeks, a few months. And I'm just sitting there like, but is that durable? Is that going to be consistent income? I never got a response from that. Uh, Tim, I agree. I move up in my job, got more responsibilities to start taking more time from my Hustle. Yes, I got more money, but it was not enjoyable. And just let's let's just keep it real. Let's say what are raises in jobs? Three, four percent. I have no clue. Let's say you make 35K and they give you a gang of responsibility. Um, and they give you a fifteen thousand dollar year raise. So now you make it 50, but you're now working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. When you come home, you're exhausted. If you got if you're married with uh, kids, then, you, you know, you got to do the family thing on the weekends. Where's the time for you to build your business? See, this is what I'm saying. You know, don't focus. Getting jobs, having jobs is so deeply ingrained in who we are that it's a hard thing to get away from. 
Now, when I got kicked out the matrix, I disavowed jobs. Now, before my experience of living in that boarding house and going through all that stuff, you couldn't tear me away from a job. I get it. It's real hard. But you should be focusing on the success of you, not the success of your job, not the success of the company that you work. I became a guerrilla warfare. It's like I got these jobs and I was looking out for me. Number one. I learned what I needed and I got I got on. I, I moved on. And this is how some of you are going to have to develop this guerrilla mindset, because <clears throat> let's say you 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 opted out of your jobs. Let's say you make 75K. Right. So you pay off all your debt and then you go out and get a job as a security guard where you're sitting all day. You got your phone, or your iPad. You can do research. You can literally run your business while you're sitting down on that job. Hint, hint. And you take a hit where you don't live like you want to live for a year. But now you got your security guard job and you got your business and now your business in year two makes more money than you were making on your job. I have a friend who was an artist who is an artist. He couldn't get his art business going the way that he wanted. So he took a job a night shift at Quick Trip. It was easy because no one wanted to work night shift. So he did night shift at Quick Trip for 18 months while he got his business rolling. Once again, delayed gratification and sacrifice. This is the path to wealth. This is the path to success. And a lot of people don't want to walk that path. Lamode. Hey, K King Tang, here's another testimonial. Lamode. I took Linda's course. I opened the accounts about one and a half years ago, and I'm so happy I took the course. I took action, was patient, and now it's happening. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, Lamode. This, because I get people like who want these pretty polished testimonials. You know what they want? They like to watch. They want some hustler porn. I don't have any. Uh, Black Zeus 92. The only, you know, I will make those available for people in hustler undergrad. Uh, only thing that I'm focusing on is hustler undergrad. That's the only thing for sale that's off of this channel. And there'll be some T-shirts later. <laughs> JP, yes, after 7 p.m. works. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan's dropping that knowledge. Thank you, Stefan. What's up, Jay Humps? Oh, uh, no, the five accounts, well, they're all connected because you, you do them at the same bank. And you can transfer money between them pretty easily. All right. And this this is another example. Cool breeze. While you're figuring out what you want to do, you should at least get the five accounts to start stacking some money somewhere. I'm telling you, uh, one of the things that used to really irk me and I was very disappointed in myself in the storage auction business was I didn't practice the financial discipline. So I would blow all my money and then great units would come up and they would get them cheaper than I bought those crappy units. Right. So I started to segment money. In one pocket, I kept five over here. In the other pocket, I kept five. This five was to you know to buy the regular units, and this five was to buy special units. And that's when I really started to come up. But it took a minute. Uh, special ad. The only marketing I do is YouTube. Uh, Vegas Star. I would not use business credit for real estate, even with good credit. Wouldn't do it. What's up, honey bunny? The chosen one getting those business cards. What's up, Bander Dash? Great energy today. It's a good day. Uh, Superstar Customs. There will be a group sometime in 2019. And let me give you the methodology why I'm not creating a group now. I want everyone to be on the path and typically with a Facebook group, because this is what is happening with Hustler uh, Disruptive Mail. There's a lot of people who are wounded and hurt and they like to post, you know, junk because they're comfortable with that. And that's a way for venting. I, I totally understand that. 
but I've cut that out for the next two weeks so we can focus on business. So essentially what's going to happen is once you start doing certain things, because at this point I'll have an assistant and you're going to be vetted before going in the group, you know, because if everybody in the group is working on something, doing something, the energy is just going to be so uh, different. That's why I'm not creating it now. It'll be sometime 2019. What's up, Pamela C, Millennial Mitch? <laughs> raises, what raises? I don't know, man. I don't know. Cool breeze, exactly. Pamela C says to start my YouTube channel and learn the phrase delayed gratification is real. It's going to take a long time to get viewers, a great learning experience. Um, Pamela, look up this chick by the name of Jade. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to put her name. YouTube. Uh, I can't find it. I can't think of her last name. But uh, she's really good. She's a hidden jewel. Uh, Millennial Mitch, thanks for the ten dollars super chat. <laughs> All right, Jamal, just watch your video on online service businesses. Thanks for the kicking ass on using skills on burnout on. If you're burned out from doing what you do, once you start making some real money, I guarantee you that burnout will dissipate. Honey bunny. Generally speaking, cost of living raises for 2% merit. Whoa. Uh, going from supervisor to the manager is usually a 10%. I did not know that. Wow. So my 15K was way off base. <laughs> it was way off base. The chosen one, 9 to 5 ain't worth it anymore. You should use a job like a spare tire to get you to the service station. I like that. I like that a lot. Hustle porn makes more money than the porn industry. I, you know what? I think it does. Because the porn industry right now is in trouble. There's only like two or three main companies and there's a bunch of uh, bootleg porn operators. What they're doing is you'll get a guy and he'll shoot everything himself and then he will put it up. And this is where a lot of this abuse happens with these girls. I mean... It, it, it is crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stefan, in my experience, you get a better a raise by getting a better job. They usually come with the added expense of certifications. Yeah, because this is what I did. I got jobs and I learned on these jobs so I can lead the jobs. I wasn't about trying to become the manager of V. No, it was just like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get these skills. I'm going to network with some people and then I'm going to be out. I did uh, really create was eight months business panel systems. Unlimited was six months. Business environment was eight months and I was out. Those are the last jobs I had. Uh, righteous media, if you consider an independent service provider, does that make I uh, I don't really know because, you know, I need more context. Uh, Randall Riley, check your email, go to your spam folder. It's in the it's under the art of holding companies tab. Mr. High profile. Good Lord. It jumped. All right. I make 45K a highly stressful and time consuming job. I hustle on the side, delivering after work. I can make what my net income is doing the delivery job. I want my life back. Any advice? I think you just answered your own question. You got to take that leap of faith. Now, I would say, because you already have something established, and once you do it full time, there will be additional challenges, but you, you got to make that decision. Uh, she talks about digital marketing, but I can't. She's an Asian chick, and her last name starts as J.D. Uh, Jacob Watson, any debt? Uh, any advice on debt consolidating? Make more money. The fastest way that you're going to pay off debts is to make additional money above what you have currently coming in.
Mentor Shelly, would you recommend buying ads on YouTube? No. I would build up my organic traffic first and then start ads. Because see, once you get into ads, it gets very, very expensive. Uh, I would do a direct marketing approach. I would just like out of your four videos, I was like one, hey, this is what I'm doing. If you need help, I would do that, that first so you can work out all the kinks before you start spending money. Been the bartender. Funny thing is I started focusing on my side hustle. My working job environment got better because you don't care. You know, it's like when you're the one to do the breakup, you're like, you cool, right? Because <laughs> you're about to break up with your job. <laughs> That's why you don't care, man. That's a good look, though. That's yeah, a very good look. Uh, cool breeze. Nina Harley makes most of her money from teaching and educating as well as special stuff. She's an icon. But see, the thing is, Nina actually enjoyed porn. Most of these girls don't enjoy porn. Bootleg porn runs are the disruptive directors. They really are. Uh, I don't. I don't understand that question, Sajid. If you're if anyone is talking about getting hired, getting jobs, I am the last person to help you with that. I've not had a job since 2000. Yeah, I haven't had a job since 2000. We're in 18 years. I'm actually. Hmm. I have actually entered either I've entered it or I will be entering it. The phase of where I've been self-employed longer than I had a job. Uh, Conan J, no. Kinder Ward. Patrick Oni, advice for black people climbing up corporate ladder to start a business and look at what's happening on the Fed government. Decide not to increase wages for four years, so no wage increases. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Fester the MIGTO, you posted a video about how to reverse the fucked up life. Uh, last month, I've been making a lot of progress again. Kudos to you for taking action. Awesome, Fester, Fester the MIGTO. Uh, the chosen one, should people see y'all kind of getting in the weeds right now. Uh, we'll be dealing with all that stuff in Hustler Undergrad at certain sectors. Once again, uh, I've taken the stance that I'm going to give you what you need first, not what you want, but what you need. And then we're going to build on that because now we have this foundation. So with that, OK, so uh, I'm going to end here right now until. 11:59 Pacific Standard Time for my folks in California. You always say you don't care, you California people, man. You know you be doing that 11:59 Eastern Time. So until 11 p.m. 59 Pacific Standard Time, you can get in and get Hustler Undergrad. It's 199.99 per month for 25 months. Links below the video. So uh, give me 24 hours to get everything set up because we're having a webinar this Sunday, I believe 4 p.m., uh, the Art of Holding Companies. So if you want to be part of that, you're going to have to get in today. And I got to get that together. So everybody that signs up today will be signed up at least by Saturday. And that's why there's another cutoff. And then I'm going to send you the link to the webinar and we can rock and roll Sunday. And I'm probably going to do maybe because once again, I got to play around with it because I know Sunday's a really good day because the people are off. So I'm probably going to do some training on Sundays. That's probably a given because I was doing a lot of webinars, uh, just streams on Sundays. So we'll do training on Sundays. And then during the week, it's probably going to be after 7 p.m. because I know that a lot of people just based upon the attendance of the streams. I get so many people, more people after like, I'm surprised I've got 140, 145 people this early, but at night I get way more people. So 
definitely after seven and we'll probably do some stuff Sunday unless I'm out of town. Because if I'm in town, there's no problem doing it. But if I'm out of town and I'll put a list together because everyone that joins Hustle Undergrad, you're on a special email list. Don't jump off and you get updates and stuff. And once again, I'm just straightening up all the technical difficulties because a lot of people don't understand how email the email clients work. And I'm not saying that you're stupid, but all of these email clients, Yahoo, Gmail, they interface with the MailChimps, the AWebers of the world. So uh, <laughs> if let's say if you had a bad email account with MailChimp, MailChimp advertises all this to all these other, you know, Gmail, Yahoo, and your stuff automatically goes in the spam folder. It's crazy. Mr. Lane. No, man, because uh, one of the things that after we get the whole company stuff together, we're going to start doing webinars on these side hustles. But once again, we got to get this done. Then we move on to side hustles and then we move on to selling and then we move on to marketing. It's a it's a process because. One of the things is you've got many people out there who are hustling and they're hustling at a high level. Some of these folks are making 100 K a month. They have no good business structure and they're just they don't even know how much money they're making. They don't keep track of it. They're going to run into tax problems. They're going to run into uh, credit problems because they're hustling. And at some point, that hustle is going to drop and then they get used to spending all their money. It, it's just bad stuff, bad stuff all the way around. So with that, once again, you can get in Hustler Undergrad. Give me until tomorrow to get everyone in because I know a bunch of people are going to sign up today and then we will have a webinar this Sunday, I believe, 4 p.m. So I'll get all that stuff sorted out these next day or so. All right. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys later. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe, like and comment. Talk to you later.